Hello again, it's good to be back with you. And today I want to talk a little bit about the building blocks of thermodynamics. I know that sounds kind of daunting, but it's not, okay? What I want to do is I want to start with something that we already know about, something we use absolutely every day, and show you that uh, the building blocks of thermodynamics are almost the same thing. They work in the same way, all right? So there's, there's no need to be scared of it. There's no need to be intimidated by it. It's something that's already familiar, all right? Now, before you click away from this video, give me a minute here. I promise I'm going to make this work. All right, I'm going to start with mathematics. Now, my son, the mathematician, or math student, I guess, um, who doesn't think I know any mathematics, <laughs> it's probably true, um, has told me about something called the ZF axioms, and named after two, two folks named Zermelo and Frankel. There are nine ZF axioms, and there's one other one that's added to it to make ten axioms. An axiom is just a statement of some fundamental concept. That's all an axiom is. That's axiom is a 50 cent word for that. If you have these 10 axioms and you put them in a blender, metaphorically, and you turn the blender on, what comes out is mathematics. He tells me that basically all the mathematics before about 1850 come from those 10 axioms. Okay? And, and what Mathematics before 1850 is basically all of engineering mathematics. There's, there's probably some exceptions, but that's the big idea. Um, so we already work in a, a system of logic that starts with 10 statements of fundamental concepts and has built this incredible foundation of mathematics, this incredible uh, superstructure of mathematics on that foundation of those 10 ideas. We do this every day. If you're doing your homework and you're doing uh, differential equations or integrals or something, that's those 10 axioms. If you're programming a computer, maybe those 10 axioms are at play there. If you're doing uh, geometry or trigonometry or algebra or you're drawing plots or whatever, that all came from those 10 axioms. So we do this all the time. You already know about this. Now, maybe you didn't know all the details, but we're already in the world of having an entire field of study come from a small number of fundamental ideas. We've already done that. Okay? So, let's go back to thermodynamics. There's not that many fundamental ideas in thermodynamics. There are four laws, and there's a couple of other things we use, like uh, the ideal gas law and some other things. But those four laws, if you put them in a the blender, again metaphorically, um, what comes out is thermodynamics. Now, what are those four laws? Well, it would be nice. I don't want to have to write those all up on the board, but um, I know something you don't know. I have a whiteboard elf. His name is Spike. Told you. Well, anyway, so Spike's been here. Oh, look. See? So here's the four laws of thermodynamics. Now, the development of science and technology isn't always a smooth thing. Uh, sometimes we have to circle back when we realize we've forgotten something. That, because of that, the four laws of thermodynamics aren't numbered one through four, they're numbered zero through three. Uh, what basically happened is they got the first three and then somebody circled back and went, oh, wait a minute, we need one more if this is going to work. And so they, since they already had the naming convention in place, somebody decided to call it the zeroth law. But this is the oops law, okay? This is the law that real people realized later they had to have to get this, the rest of this stuff to work. There's only four laws, okay? It's not like 10 as in the ZF algorithms plus axioms plus something called the axiom of choice, those 10 axioms that create mathematics. Um, so there's only four. And basically, most of what we would call thermodynamics emerges from all this. If you know what these are, you pretty much get thermodynamics. Okay, the, for, the zeroth law and the third law are kind of bookkeeping kinds of laws. You won't use those a lot, all right? They're, they're statements of fact, they're uh, conceptually necessary, but they aren't the ones you're going to use most of the time. The zeroth law says that if two systems are in thermal equilibrium with a third, well, what does that mean? That means if I have a block of metal here and a block of metal here and a block of metal there, 
if this one's the same temperature as that one, and this one's the same temperature as that one, then these two are the same temperature as each other. That's all it means, okay? So it's there for bookkeeping reasons, but you're not going to use it very often, okay? It's the reason thermometers work. If I have two thermometers and they've been calibrated against a third somehow, I can take those two thermometers somewhere else, and if they read the same as each other, I know they're right. That's, that's what's going on here. The third law is another one of these bookkeeping kinds of laws. As a system approaches absolute zero, all processes cease and entropy approaches a minimum. Okay. It's true. I mean, there's no doubt that it's true. Now, how often am I really going to use this? Well, I mean, I'm an engineer. I don't, I don't get to pull things down to absolute zero very often. If you're a physicist, this actually might be something you do every day. I'm not sure. But as an engineer, as somebody who's, who's trying to build products, design products, this is another one of those bookkeeping laws. It's true, it's necessary for the development of thermodynamics, but I'm not going to use it very often. Okay? So the two I use most of the time are the first and the second. Those are the ones that are they're really at the core of what we do. The internal energy of an isolated system is constant. If I want energy to go in or out of a system, I'm probably going to have to put uh, some work into it. So, and it can happen on a very small scale, my refrigerator. If I want to pull energy out of the contents of my refrigerator, um, and I don't, I don't want to, uh, 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 I, I want the refrigerator to be isolated from the rest of the room, I'm stuck. It isn't going to work. But if I put a compressor on there and dump heat from the inside of the refrigerator to the out into the room, it's going to work. Okay, That's this. It works on a much, much larger scale. Think about the Earth. Okay, The Earth is warming. Okay, well, how in the heck is it warming? If the Earth was an isolated system, how could it be warming? Well, it's not an isolated system. The sun's out there. Okay, the sun is dumping energy into the Earth. The Earth is rejecting heat out to the out to the space. But for technical reasons, it's it's rejecting a little bit less heat out than is coming in. So it warms up. All right. So that's there's there's the first law in action. And the second law: heat cannot spontaneously move from a colder location to a hotter one. Well, does that make sense? If I had an ice cube and I held it here, it's going to melt, right? So heat from the room is going into the ice cube, from hotter to the colder location. I have a little bottle of, this is a jug of water here that I've got. Okay, what are the chances that the heat from, the, the heat from this is spontaneously going to go out into the room? This is going to get colder, reject heat into the hotter room, and this is going to freeze just on its own. Zero. That's what the chances are. And the reason the chances are zero is because of the second law. So if you're working in uh, engineering, physics most of the time, first law and the second law are the two you're going to be working with most of the time. And these are the ones you really care about. The, the zero and the third law are kind of, like I said, bookkeeping things. They're correct and they're necessary. But they're not, they don't have a lot of practical implications most of the time. Okay? So I think probably let's stop there. We'll thank Spike for Spike's help. Um, and uh, what we've got now, these are the building blocks of thermodynamics. Have small number of rules, thermodynamics emerges from these rules. And if you, that sounds a little funny or a little uh, uh, unfamiliar, go back to mathematics. Whether you knew it before or not, all of the mathematics most of us use comes from 10 axioms, all right? So that co the concept is already there. We already have this idea of starting from a small number of rules and unpacking them to a large field of study. This is like that, only now it's thermal instead of math, okay? So I hope this helps. I'm gonna get out of your way one more time. So if you wanna do a screenshot or whatever, you can get those, all right? Probably get them off Wikipedia. So anyway, I hope this helps, and I'll talk to you next time.